And we're glad you're still with us right here on the Morning Express. And uh, today it's all about love. And if you don't know, tomorrow is the 14th of February, Valentine's Day, then I don't know what rock you've been under. But anyway, we've made sure that we've got you covered. Even for those of you that are last minuters, we are here to make sure that your day is going to be splendid. And uh, yeah, we did promise you earlier on uh, that we're going to be having Bob Collimo come into the studio. And he's here with us. Welcome, Bob. It's a pleasure. Good to have you. I looked at your name and I saw Robert William Collimo. That's the dignified name. That's the <laughs> CEO of Safaricom. That is, but today no. we're, talking, we're talking to Bob. We're talking to Bob today. Yeah. Bob and his mates. <laughs> you know, you're really lucky to get, uh, to get Jacob today. Okay. If it was tomorrow, because tomorrow he's going to uh, Kempinski, he's taking Kabuda. Mm -hmm. oh. Are you on the 2.4 oh, oh, million? No, it's the 1.4. Oh, no, it's the 1 oh yes. what, the mini? <laughs> <laughs> where, where, where he's come from, he likes to pretend. Okay. You see the cravat and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But tomorrow, Kabuda. Yeah, welcome, welcome, Jacob. It's good to have you around. And it's good to, 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 I saw the receipts, you know. I didn't have your name, but that was a way of covering up. Bob has just blown your cover. I had an m -person notification. You didn't see that? It was not a piece of paper? Oh, it was an it was m -person. <laughs> or is it from your bonga points that you got these presidentials? Maybe you've you know, accumulated so many of them. No, bundles. The bundles. You guys, you know him very well, huh? He, he, uh, he's all gloves. He's all gloves. He's like those drumsticks. He's got a set of drumsticks there. Yeah, yeah. Earlier on, he I says, asked Bob whether he was going to be playing drums. And he said, nah, I don't use such cheap drumsticks. So why would you Ooh. put... Imported, especially from Taiwan. From Taiwan, okay, yes. He's a sax player. Ah, yeah, good to know. Yeah. So your jazz, uh, love, love for jazz is not just listening, but you also play. <laughs> <laughs> Ignore this, man. <laughs> no, Bob, to, to, today, today we're going to put you on the spot. I hope you've carried your saxophone. If not, then, then we'll have to look for an instrument. No, don't worry, we have that one you can, Yeah, we have one that you we can play. Sax. You've got to bring my sax. Instead, you brought that cheap drum, drumstick and the drum kit. Where did you get that drum kit from? Sorry, you is it yours? If you don't have your saxophone, you're stuck with this instrument. <laughs> So when we get to the point where we'll be playing a bit of jazz, I need to be Bob is good for the joint. You can shake it, shake it. Yeah, shake it. Shake it. Shake it, Bob. Shake it. At least before we continue. Oh, you want to do some? Okay. What the? You want to do it? Now today, today Bob is going to learn a lesson. Next time you come, you carry your instrument. Otherwise, you play the instrument that we gave you. Don't put no, it don't down. Yeah, you're not That's allowed to put it down. I can see war has been declared this morning. <laughs> Once we begin the jazz session, because uh, I'm sure Jacob is going to give us some nice, we, we, uh, some nice music. We also have uh, George Mutinda, who's on the drums. We have hey. Stanley Chalo, who is on the bass guitar. So jazz is going to be in the house today. Now, Bob, you, you have nice a love. Nice to see Stanley turning up on time. Sorry? It's nice to see him turning up on time. Oh, he doesn't normally no, turn the last up on time. Right. <laughs> the last gig was two hours late. <laughs> and I don't know what it is and with musicians. Most of them... Time is normally a problem, but once they get there, they perform. Who told you is that? it true? I, 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 I Are you a musician? <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> you are a musician. As it is, I actually play a tenor sax. Is that right? Is that right? Is that right? And you turn up late for you your get gigs. Back in <laughs> You can get back in the box. Now. Don't make ambiguous statements. No, 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 no. no. I, 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 I play an online one. You know what? Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, God. Those are the yeah. musicians in your hood. <laughs> in the hood. Yes. Okay, so um, Bob, good to have you around, and uh, you're a lover of jazz. Where, where did that begin? I, I think it started when I was young. I mean, I grew up listening to. This is make a lot of noise now. Um, <laughs> Sophie, how is that dry white wine? Is it good? Oh, let's. I grew up listening to, you know, you know um, the, the soul classics, the Percy Sledges. And, the, um, and I remember when I, because I grew up in, in the West Indies, and I remember when I first saw um, Ray Charles mm -hmm. play live. Uh, you know, it was just an amazing experience. And since then, I've been very lucky because I've heard Ray Charles. I've listened to Ella Fitzgerald. Oscar Peterson, these are all the greats. Uh, and fortunately, my son also grew up loving jazz, and so we have a home that's jazz has played jazz. a lot. Actually, we li I like all kinds of music, okay. but jazz is something which I think is underrepresented, okay. apart from these good men next to me. Right, now jazz is not uh, too many. It may not be viewed as a very uh, common or loved genre of music, especially uh, you know in Africa and more mm. specifically in Kenya. And you are looking towards growing that love for jazz. Do you think that is happening? I think it's exposure. Uh, you know, we have some great African jazz artists. You know, Hugh Masekela, uh, the great Jonathan Butler is coming down. Uh, we've had two sets of South African resident jazz players 
uh, as part of the Safaricom series this year. Kunle Ayer, who is actually from Nigeria, uh, Jimmy Ludlow, who is from Mozambique. So we do, and last year we had Richard Bona um, from Cameroon. Cameroon, right? Cameroon. You don't know, he didn't talk to you much. <laughs> um, uh, so we do have some great uh, jazz artists in, uh, in Africa, but I think that, you know, there's just not the opportunity to listen to it. Okay. How many jazz yeah. clubs are there in, in Nairobi? Which is uh, shocking. Mm -hmm. um, I have an ambition that when I finish, or when rather Safari Comes finish with me, I will open up a, a jazz club. Also, you'll still be around for a while. That, that, that's good news. Yeah. That's good news. Now, um, so I didn't sound very excited about that. <laughs> I, I was going to yeah, say. I thought, so. he was going home. I thought he was going home this year. What's he, what do you mean he's staying? <laughs> Maybe she's eyeing your job. No, I was no. actually just going to put Jacob to tax on, a task, a task on this uh, jazz and breaking it down for us, taking us to the beginning. For somebody who's never had an appreciation for jazz, what are we talking about when we? talking jazz and of course you'll be performing for us but talk to us about it's a, it's it's quite diverse um as a genre of music break it down for us this sounds like a wikipedia question does it <laughs> so give me a wikipedia answer <coughs> or no give me a valentine's answer well, jazz is loving is that what you want me to say <laughs> <laughs> something that ridiculous no 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 um jazz is a genre of music that encompasses a lot of improvisation unlike classical music that is very very strict yeah for example if you're playing a classical piece you can't wake up tomorrow morning and decide you're not going to play if you do that you have to play it for the rest of it that's how it's going to be how it was written but if you're going to play did you hit the wrong note then don't start with me <laughs> <laughs> that was the wrong note then <laughs> that that was, I, mean, that. I mean I, I could even play that myself <laughs> Okay, okay, so okay, do this one. He's Is nervous. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Actually, I'm you know, if you demonstrate, you do Brahms lullaby, for example, mm -hmm. and then the guys can pick it up. So without rehearsing it, yeah. you'll do the opening, opening few bars of Brahms lullaby, and then uh, uh, Stanley can pick it up from there. Go, show them. Okay. Putting you on the spot. I teach him. And I guess that's why he plays jazz and not jazz. You know I can't play that, and you decide to do this on national TV. <laughs> this is unnecessary. Yes, choose, you can. Choose a song that I can yes, play. Yes, you can, Jacob. Brahms Lullaby. You don't know Brahms Lullaby. I know it. I just don't play it. I can play what I know. Okay. Okay. So and the guys can pick it up. Yeah. That's what you want to hear. No, I want you to pick up something simple. Okay. And then let the so guys like uh, Stanley's waiting. Okay. That's simple. <laughs> That's simple. Whenever you're ready, George. So you want them to join us? Yes. yes. and jazz from what you're saying is that with classical you're bound to the notes as it is you know as per the the written i'm music. not saying that you just play anything in jazz what i'm saying is that there's an <laughs> improvisational context okay. to it which means that the piece will not necessarily sound the same way it did the way you played it the night before or five years ago take herbie hancock's cantaloupe island he doesn't play it the same way that he did in 1962 or watermelon man i mean it's, it's grown and changed over the last 40 years so whereas initially it was a uh, you see, that was 1962. By 1972, it was it's the same song. So it's it's evolved over the years. Okay. Yeah. Within, 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 There's a story. There's a story on Yeah. <laughs> the first time you played that with Eddie Gray. 
<clears throat> I didn't know what I was playing. <laughs> I had no idea. Really? Yes, I really struggled on the day. And ever since I admitted that to him, he repeats it in public. Yes. Every single time. But Every I, single time. And until now, Eddie Gray says, you never played Stella by Starlight the way you played it that night, eh? <laughs> <laughs> you never that night was a whole different story. Okay, so let's come back to you, Bob. And uh, I think what has been publicized is uh, more of the jazz festival. But there's a lot that you're doing, you know, to try and uh, develop the jazz culture and the love for jazz, even in slum areas. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, there's a serious side to it. So last year when we had the, the first of the festivals, we raised about four and a half million shillings, which went to the Ghetto Classics. And the Ghetto Classics is something we started, I think, back in 2009 by... Um, the uh, the lovely Elizabeth Ndrogi. And she takes kids out of Korogosha and she teaches them music. And if ever you have time to go listen to them, these children come from, you know, the harshest backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Some of them, you know, the Saturdays they can't play because they have to go, uh, they walk across the dump. And so four and a half million shillings went to buy instruments and a van and stuff for them. And this year it goes to the same, the same cause. Um, some of those kids even play in the Safaricom Youth Orchestra uh, that plays, actually they're doing the curtain raiser on Sunday, uh, Sunday week. Um, the other thing that happens uh, during this week is we have a series of master classes. So every day at the Michael Joseph Center, each of the artists who are playing on Sunday will be holding master classes for uh, trumpet, um, saxophone. We don't have any keyboard players, right? Um, mm -hmm. And that's all about lifting the overall standards. So, uh, you know, serious musicians. I mean, we don't want people who are going to go and ask what a blue scale is. Okay. Um, what, what do you see as the future for, for those kids, you know, in the ghettos when they get into uh, jazz? What, what do you see as, what is your plan, game plan, you know, in terms of their future when it comes to music? Well, ghetto classics is not just about jazz. It's about music. Because music really has this ability to lift the human spirits um, and bring together. You know, if you take the the Safaricom Youth Orchestra, for example. We have kids who come from Braeburn, we have kids who come from Korogosha, and they all sit together and they make what I think is, is beautiful music. Um, so, you know, whether people want to become musicians or not, it is just something which lifts the spirit. Uh, and teaches, you know, where else do you get a child from Braeburn listening to a child from Korogosha? It doesn't happen. The opportunity doesn't, doesn't occur. But when you put these children together, we're under these fantastic tutors that we that volunteer their time on Saturday mornings. Um, the the output is the output and the outcome mm -hmm. is fantastic. It's something fantastic. Yeah, Jacob, um, just to bring you in as well. For you, a master in your craft, Mr. Asio himself. I Why are you giving me that. that look? I wouldn't say that. You're I'm saying me up it. For failure. I'm saying it. <laughs> okay. And so many other people it's are a there. Fact. But where did that journey begin for you? Like, where did you start? I was telling them earlier. It was about. Um, the neighbors that I grew up next to, yeah. their mom, well, she's our mother, was a piano teacher. So whenever I went to play football, I was left outside and she started feeling sorry for me mm. because each of the children, each of the boys went in for half an hour. Yeah. And, and that's how it began. And slowly by slowly, roped in, got the interest. The interest was girls. A girl in particular, she was a piano <laughs> player. So of, of course, okay. she could play and it was the only way we could get to talk. That's a serious girl. I mean, uh, her boyfriend had a ponytail and played rugby. I had no chance. So the only way I could was, you know. Serenade her. <laughs> exactly. We could yeah. talk about. <laughs> <laughs> and she knows I, who she is. I guess, <laughs> I, guess, I, I guess tomorrow being Valentine, you know, this, this might be a good opportunity to uh, just let our viewers know that in case you don't have lyrics, borrow from some music. And, you know, if you can play it, then why not? You think so, huh? I think so. I think it's a good idea. You don't appear to agree. No, no, I agree, especially for a certain Mr. Rimbu. He hates it when I do this. <coughs> See, there you go, sing. Yeah. Don't go. <laughs> you know, this is a tribute to Rambui. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He hates because because usually the keyboard guy sits in the corner. But Rambui has to be in the middle of the stage. So we're doing this especially for Aaron. <laughs> to put the keyboard in the middle of the stage. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, Bob, uh, the, the, the Jazz It Up coming up on the 22nd. For those who are gearing up to come and maybe who, some who are still, you know, wondering what, what, what should we expect? Well, the first thing I say is uh, turn up on time huh? because we have a packed agenda. We s the curtain goes up at, s at 12.30 and we have artists coming from 
Israel. Israel, we've got a, a young man called Toma Bar. Toma Bar, 18 years old, uh, released his fourth album. At 18? And he's doing, wow. yeah, so he's coming with the Toma Bar trio. Uh, we have um, always the eclectic Belgians. Last year we had the Rhythm Junks. This year we've got um, uh, Nicholas Kumert. Now the Rhythm Junks, a, a very good example. These guys, they came, they were so excited by what they saw in Korogocha. Mm -hmm. Uh, that they've now connected and they now teach the harmonica via Skype to people in Korogocha. They <coughs> provided, I think, something like 200 <coughs> harmonicas. So there's a connection that we're trying to make which will last beyond the festival. So that's, um, that's uh, uh, Kumart. Then we have Ak Van Ruin, uh, who is a bit of an old timer. He plays the, the flugelhorn, well, the horn and the flugelhorn. Uh, so he is. Um, uh, he's coming, you know, a real solid musician. From the UK, we have uh, young Soweto Kinch. Soweto Kinch is a saxophonist. Uh, started when he was about nine and uh, really inspired by, I think he was inspired by uh, Winter Marcellus when he was 13. So here again, you know, if you can give kids the opportunity to see some of these world-class artists, you never know when you're going to get another Soweto Kinch coming. So Soweto's coming. Um, Playing, starting to play on Monday nights uh, because we have a series during the week. And of course, Jimmy Dludlu, who was so enthralled with, uh, with Kenya mm -hmm. uh, and indeed the Soweto, not the Soweto, the Swahili band. Uh, so he's, he's coming back you know, in his own time, actually, coming back. And he says, Look, you know, can I get on the set? So he's playing. And of course, we have the great uh, Jonathan Butler. Right. Uh, for Jonathan, it's not the first time in Nairobi. He's been really excited. We really wanted to have him last year, but the <coughs> schedules didn't work. So okay. I think we've covered everybody. It's, um, oh, fantastic. Now, you mentioned something interesting. And locally, locally, sorry, locally, we have the Swahili band, which is... Um, Swahili band. Yeah. I know, really these guys were fantastic. Yeah. Um, in fact, they're the only ones who made it through the audition. You auditioned as well, <coughs> didn't you? You were at the audition. What happened, Jacob? What happened was that he played last year. <laughs> <laughs> and so we learned. <laughs> <laughs> you two have a very good relationship. I mean, we I don't, don't have a good relationship. Really, yeah, no, it's not a good relationship. You guys, yeah, you boys. Not, <laughs> no, no, like not. Boys. I'm saying no, no. I disagree. What are you? I'm a friend of his wife, actually. <laughs> I'm a friend of his wife. So that, Security, that, that, please get ready. I think I foresee that, see that yeah. you may need your services after this show. <laughs> no, seriously. Just, just you know, to control. We know. We know. You know he's, he's actually a great... Uh, okay. Now, uh, Bob, you mentioned something uh, um, important then. You mentioned that, you know, I think it's good to, to uh, nature and nurture this music gift in our children. Um, at what point did you, first of all, uh, realize that you had this love for music and you wanted to, you know, grow it? And secondly, how does one identify that in their children and, and nature it and nurture it? It takes, it takes a bit of dedication for, for parents, right? Um, so my son started playing when he was seven. Uh, wanted to play the violin, but <laughs> it takes a lot of patience with a parent, for a parent to listen to a child play a violin. Uh, so I stopped him. And, I said, <laughs> and especially for one like you who knows what good music is. <laughs> I said, enough. Uh, and uh, then he started playing the piano. I was, I've always had a piano at home, still do now. Um, and uh, all the people who come to my house, they don't play. He wants to be paid when he comes. <laughs> um, and so with James, James started at seven. And uh, by eight, you know, he'd won his first music, uh, music festival. But you really have to let the child do it at their own pace, find the right teacher, because the child doesn't play for himself or his, his parents. The child always plays for his tutor. Get the right tutor, invest in the best instruments you can, and let them listen to music. My children, all my children, they listen to all kinds of music, you know, whether it's uh, Indian music, <coughs> it's classical music, it's opera, it's jazz. Let them listen to music. If you don't listen to decent music, then you'll never develop a keen ear. You know, Jacob was, was thinking, you and Kavuda, um, I imagine you both are, you know, musical family going on. So in the house, like tomorrow, Valentine's, do you like start singing, Baby, I love you. Do that again. Sings back. <laughs> do, that, do that again. Do that again. No, do you like have moments like that in the house? Just do it again. Do it again. <laughs> do it again. <laughs> <laughs> He's ready. He's he it. Even me, I'm ready. Oh, you're going to go. We're ready. Woohoo! Man in studio. But seriously, do you have those kind of moments where you just. Of course not. I mean, why? No? No. <laughs> really? It's a normal house. Yeah. You know that's why you're not a musician. You'd be doing that. Just do it again. Baby, I love just do it again. Yeah, that, that just came out. It's not going to come out again. <laughs> it's not going to happen. No, you don't have that? No, no, no. If, if my wife and I discuss a song, either it's really good or really bad, 
because we've got very different tastes. Okay. You can't walk around the house singing. I mean, it doesn't make sense. Or yeah. Playing an instrument. No, no. So it doesn't make sense. <laughs> but you have moments where you like, you know, just jazz it up and uh, jam it up and, you know, just play something and she sings along. Yeah, or no, she sings no, for you, you for her. <laughs> no, it doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. No, because one would imagine that's perhaps a lot of, you know, even what tomorrow plans. That's very cliche. No, no it's okay. not like that. Okay. But a Kempinski, are you going to... I don't even know why you're bringing that up. I'm not involved in that. <laughs> you're not involved? <laughs> well, how is she doing, your wife? She's wonderful. Thank you very much for asking. Yeah. Yes. Valentine great. plans. You know, we have to just keep throwing those questions in there. We I just think have I have to be to very discreet about that. Uh-huh. Yes. But there is a plan. Of course there's a plan. Okay. Yes. For, for Buddha? 